watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. Myself here with Steve, of course, and we are talking about Martin O'Neill's 32 man provisional squad and what we think about it. So, suppose we start yeah. with the keepers. Uh, no um, real shock there. No real shocks. I'm a little bit surprised Colin Doyle's in it, obviously being a League One keeper, but I suppose at the same time he's probably not going to make the final yeah. kind of squad. He's only just named the provisional one because you probably don't have another goalkeeper really. Yeah. He's Besides not, that kind of standard, yeah. Yeah, so you're kind of you're just picking the experience out. There's been about the squad before, like you're only short of picking day before from Cambridge at this point, like yeah. I um, I don't see either of them getting out. I mean, I don't see even Elliot getting in ahead of Randolph. I think Randolph's set as the number one. I don't think he'd be taken out till at least after the qualifiers, if he d- even does. So, um, Elliot's been doing quite well for Newcastle of late, though, in fairness to him. Yeah, Elliot's been doing very well for Newcastle, I thought, this season. And um, Westwood, even though he's got a bit of international pedigree and stuff, and he's played for Ireland a bit before. He hasn't had a great season so far with Sheffield Wednesday. It's probably not his fault. Um, it's more just the team in general. But I think Randolph's probably under less pressure now than when we were talking about it a few weeks back. Um, just purely down to the fact that Elliot doesn't have a lot of international experience and Westwood isn't in great form. Yeah, and just well, as well as that, Elliot, uh, he does get injured a lot. And that's kind of yeah. been his downfall. I think if he could stay injury-free, he's proven it in the Premier League that he's a fairly decent keeper. I don't think he's... Like, you know, a life saver or anything like that but yeah, it's not as if we've no air flowing about a third choice keeper but exactly yeah uh, we're moving on into defenders and no kind of real shocks there in fairness yeah as, I'm, as I think I say now in every Ireland video Ender and Stephen should still be in the squad we still only have one left back yeah um, but he keeps on bringing on Odeoda for Ward as well which is kind of bizarre isn't it? yeah moving Brady back to left back which I don't really understand I know Brady had played well when he went back to left back um, in the last game, but like you know, only going into a squad with one natural left back, what Ward gets injured, suddenly you're having to bring in if you are bringing in Stevens or you're bringing in Cunningham, you're bringing them in cold to the squad, yeah. and they weren't expecting to be in the squad. Suddenly they're having to come in and do a job like and possibly start games. Yeah. Um, when they haven't really been about the squad, I think it's, I think it's absolutely idiotic to have a left back now who's over thirty years old being the only left back in your squad you have to at some point embrace that we need something past these next two games we need a player who can fill this position after these two games of the left backs that we have available Stevens is in the best form Sheffield United are flying he's getting assists in nearly every game yeah, um, he had another one we're recording this on Thursday and he had another one last night for them he'd won at the weekend in the um, Steel City Derby <coughs> I don't see why he's not getting it I mean he's creating chances and Ward doesn't do that he, yeah. he just kind of when he gets past the, the winger if he overlaps he just head down and just hopes for the best just throws the ball there yeah we need an evolution at some point and it's not it's just not coming it's just yeah. this squad is just yes we'll get onto the strikers and there's two new names there but Let's be honest, either I'm even gonna get a runner. Yeah, well, in terms of uh, like over our defenders, I'd like to see Kevin Long get a run at centre half. Yeah, I, I think yeah, when he did play against Austria, he was he was fairly solid, and I don't see him struggling against the Moldova side if he could deal with the the Austrians. So. Yeah, like Duffy and Clark, Duffy and Clark are kind of a settled partnership for O'Neill now, um, for better or worse. I'm not really sure which one at the minute because oh, it depends on not, the game. I'm not, sure, I'm not sold on Duffy. I think he's very clumsy. I think Duffy can be clumsy, but I think he's also capable of having absolutely storming performances, yeah. and that's the only thing is as well. It causes absolute mayhem in the opposition's box yeah. as well from set pieces. So, in terms of that, he is good to have there. But I just think his decision making at times it can be appalling. I think his passing ability is quite poor. I think that's the worst yeah. bit about him, and I think that's where Long does have him. Um, is in terms of passing ability, but also Clark is. Clark's not a young young man anymore. He's kind of this is as good as Clark's gonna get. Yeah. Um, and eventually he's, he's gonna, seven or so now, isn't he? Yeah, like he's got obviously he's got a couple of campaigns left in him. He's not, yeah. he's not on the way out or anything. But again, at some point, these younger lads have to get more game time than just one when Clark's suspended. Yeah. You have to see something different at some point. Yeah. Well, uh, you guys let us t- uh, know what you think about the defenders anyway in the comments. Um, then moving and into midfield no just real, as well no Matt Doherty in the squad which baffles me again why does he not bring cover for fullbacks Cyrus Christie was very very poor he was against Serbia and he doesn't bring cover at right back 
don't it's know. <laughs> maybe he feels as though um, hang on one sec. David Wyler can cover yes. a right back probably, even though he was our best centre midfielder. It's yeah. just it's nonsensical at this but he point. Does think, he, I do think he, he, he thinks that Moyler has covered there in the past and done a good job. He's solid no matter kind of really where you put him. I think I think he will go with the same midfield that he did against um Serbia uh, in the in the next game. Well he obviously can't go with Brady. Maybe maybe throw in Hurhan. Yeah. Uh, in Brady's position. He's been banging them in for um for Aston Villa. And yeah. you know, he's he, he's he is very good from dead balls uh, set pieces as well. Yeah. As he's shown with Villa this season, so if we can get him on the ball and um, on set pieces and stuff like that, I don't see why he couldn't do a job. I mean, he did quite well when he came on against Serbia. Yeah, I think Hurran's a good player, and he should have he should have had more game time in this campaign. But he's kind of unavoidable at this point because he is playing so well for Villa, yeah. and especially with Brady, yeah, we need someone to be able to take set pieces and, and he's scoring goals. He's full of confidence. Hurran takes set pieces for Villa. He's always taken set pieces when he was at Barnsley, when he was at Plymouth, when he was at Oxford. He's always taken set pieces mm. for his team. So you bring him in, he's got a good delivery. He's left foot as well. So it's the same type of delivery yeah. as Brady gives. Um, it doesn't change kind of your set piece routines or anything like that, which is important. Um, and they'd, the, be, they'd be doing stuff on the training ground together. Yeah, the worry though for me is that he doesn't bring back in Horahan and he brings back in Whelan and plays with Whelan and Wilder. Which against which Moldova is, him. yeah, probably. Mm. Which is just, it's not gonna work. It's, we showed how much we struggled against Moldova over there because we played too passively. We put we played too defensive. Yeah, they're a team who you just need to come out and kill off. You can't give them confidence, and, I just I, I have no faith in O'Neill not to just revert back to type and pick Glenn Whelan. Yeah, back to basics, basically. Yeah. Um, I think that he'll, as well as that, like, you look at players like uh, Ewan O'Kane and um, Johnny Hayes, I just think that Liam Kelly should be in there ahead of, uh, of those two. I think he's done a lot more to, to warrant the place in the squad, more so than them. Well, I don't, but I'm not Martin O'Neill. So. I don't necessarily agree with O'Kane not doing well. I think he's had a good season for Leeds, and Leeds are playing very well. It's the same thing with Stevens at Sheffield tonight. It's the same thing with Doherty at Wolves. These guys are up at the top of the championship. They're important players for their team. And they can't, you know, they can't get game time for us. They had players who aren't playing every week for their teams in the championship. Yeah, just because um, they're reliable. Yeah, just because O'Neill knows them. But, you know, O'Neill knows loads of players, but most of them are in their 30s, and that doesn't yeah. work. Um, I don't think... It was a time he had passed the torch. Yeah, and I don't see what Johnny Hayes in the squad. I think, absolutely, Liam Kelly should have got a shot to even just come into the squad and Training. be a part of it above Hayes. Hayes is not a young fella at this stage. He's coming into his thirties. He's not playing for Celtic. Yeah. So what's the point in having him in the squad? You're sitting on the bench for a Scottish team. You're sitting for the only Scottish team. Sorry, Celtic. Like Celtic are fine, they're a decent side, but he's not getting in the team. Yeah. So why pick him over a player who has been playing for Reading, obviously he didn't play during the week and when they took him out of the team and he didn't play during the week, they got absolutely hockeyed. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, there's championship teams that definitely give Celtic a run for their money as well. So yeah, it's not like uh, some of those Irish players wouldn't get into that Celtic side too. Um, I suppose we'll move on then to the strikers. I think mean, there's two kind of well, I wouldn't say shock inclusions. It's just the fact that it's a shock that he's actually bringing in new players. Yeah, it's nice to see. I think it's nice to see Scott Hogan involved because I think he is a good player when he's fit. Yeah. The only issue I have is and um sure, West Ham on to the last season in January. Yeah. So it's just got it's a good sign that the Premier League side want to sign someone like that. The only issue I have with him is is he played really well for Brentford, who are a team who play football. And he's it's not really clicked for him with Villa properly. And Steve Bruce plays a really similar style to O'Neill in terms of the way he plays football. Long ball. Yeah, and that doesn't suit Scott Hogan as a striker. It just he's not that type of player. He wants to get the ball into his feet. He wants to play with it. He wants low crosses into the box and yeah. little intricate plays to get the ball into the box. I mean, he's a lethal finisher when you do, but you have to get the ball into the box to him in the right positions. And I just don't think. No, we don't. The way we, the ball, play we don't get the ball that. in to positions. We just yeah. long wall it up. I think, uh, in fairness, you now t- to be fair, Dal Murphy's been banging them in for first. Well, I think Murphy should start. I think I said that after the Serbia game. I think Murphy should start. Yeah. Head along with the way we play. Yeah, well, I don't think Shane Long's been, been cutting it too fine. I know he's been starting for Southampton of late, but he's not been scoring goals. And yeah. 
he's not really been affecting games. So if you're not affecting games and scoring goals, you're not going to be full of confidence. And I think O'Neill should go by form on this one, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, I'd say go, if it, if it was m- me personally, I'd be going with maybe maybe even Murphy and Long, or if not Murphy and Long, Murphy and Maguire up top. Yeah, like that's the other name in the squad who, if he doesn't make it into that final kind of 23 or whatever, O'Neill ends up picking at the end of it. It's I don't see how he can't pick him. He's been getting man of the match nearly every man week. Man of the match. He's, obviously, he's not scored a ton of goals for Preston. He's only got a couple. But if you look at it as well, he's got two or three assists. And yeah. But that's what I'm saying about Shane Long. Is that he's not affecting games. Yeah. Whereas even Maguire's not scoring. He's still affecting games. Yeah, Maguire's affecting games. And Maguire, as we said, is different to anything we have. He's not a big striker who is just going to run the channels. He's an intelligent player. He get the ball to his feet and he dribbles at teams. And yeah. He f- plays intelligent passes, and it's. We need something, especially without Brady and McLean against Moldova. We need players who are going to unlock them yeah. because they are going to sit deep, they are going to be defensive. We need that bit of yeah flair and intelligence, and players going to play that final ball. We can't just go brute strength against them and try and play it long. Moldova wants you to do that. Yeah. That's exactly what they want you to do, is just play that type of football. I didn't- Wales are the same. Wales would love Ireland to play loads of long balls and hoof the ball forward because it means Wales can break. Yeah. And Ireland are hitting the ball forward. But they're just giving them the ball. Yeah. I think that uh, <coughs> if, we, uh, if we're playing that sort of way, I think it's it's, it's crying out for someone like McGeady in this yeah. sort of Moldova game to, to make the difference. And he's been playing well for Sunderland. So uh, I don't see why he can't do that. He's the only player playing well for Sunderland, yeah. to be fair. Um, sorry, sorry. Yeah. But yeah, I think McGeady like against these smaller sides, he's always done well against them. He's always he creates mayhem, and that's the type of player I think we need in a game like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it is it's crying out for uh, the the game against Georgia when McGeady scored that goal kind of yeah. comes to mind. And I think in this game we need something a little bit of magic like that. And I think at times we're gonna have to avoid our look like we did against Georgia. There's gonna be times where they yeah. they may scare us, but yeah. I, I I think. We'll, we'll win even John Delaney was saying he thinks that we'll win we'll, we'll probably scrape it but we'll win and yeah. then the Wales game is going to be huge then. yeah the Wales game is just a one off performance that you just need to drag yourselves through yeah um, absolutely but out of t- it's an arbitrary rating but out of 10 what would you give the squaddies 6 I'd go at 3 I think the lack of fullbacks in it and the fact that I've no faith in any of those players who are six being generous to be honest, game to time. Be. Um, I've probably been a bit harsh at three, but it's also six is being a bit generous. It's just, 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 just like I think he's just trying to see this qualification out, and then he's going to try and bring in some new blood. That's that's how I feel. What's going to happen? I think a lot of players that are in the squad now will not be in the in the squads going forward. I hope he's not picking the squad after these next two games, but. We'll get on to that at a different time. Yeah. <laughs> well, let us know what you think in the comments, guys. Thanks very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, bleh, like, subscribe and share. Is there anything else to say? No, just keep watching the videos and we'll speak to you again soon. See you later.